Please welcome the kids in the hall. the teleprompter it said fake applause <laughs> well normally we don't have to do that uh, but we yeah. told them <laughs> you brought it in tonight touche nice touche to see you, sir. Touché. Well nice played. To see you fellas well, thanks nothing. for coming <laughs> um, now it says blanked because <laughs> now it's all off the cuff. Now it's, it's just all off the cuff. Oh, all right. That's what we do. This is the part where we talk. You were, just, you, just, you were going to go blank and just stare at us for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Often that happens, David. <laughs> Often that happens. I've done that to you. you no, you've actually just been stared at you. Mm. Oh, we'll come back and talk to him. Um, you guys have done reunions uh, and you've done performances uh, since the television show went away. <laughs> But how do you say it? You've got a new TV series. What I was about to say? You've done television shows. Okay. You've done performances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Normally, Mr. McDonald has an ear horn. Okay. What do you say? Normally, Mr. McDonald has an ear horn. A new TV series. Uh, How'd you get to, here, to be at this place? Well, I think the, the short answer is we didn't want to be the Beach Boys. Um, <laughs> as, as much as we... smile and uh, sounds are two brilliant albums. They really are. But I mean what the Beach Boys became, which there is... There are music nerds all across the country going, Oh! <laughs> Another reason I hate McCullough, first the Doors, now the Beach Boys. Um, is, you know, that we have, we've sustained ourselves as an entity f by touring for the last 10 years. And, you know, the last tour was really fun because we wrote a bunch of new material. But we didn't want to be just known for the Head Crusher and yeah. uh, Chicken Lady and any other Fancy. Mark Fancy. characters. Fancy. Mark yeah. characters, yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't touch my chicken. <laughs> so we wanted to lay down something and uh, put it back into culture, and that's what we did. That's right. Well, it's a challenging thing, right? When uh, it, when you're trying to find another way to play with the same characters that you've worked with and add some new ones, was it an easy process to get to this television show? Oh. Um, yes, actually, it really was. was. <laughs> it started, well, it started out. We were talking after, as first after we'd done some writing of new stuff. We realized we still liked writing together, so it was. We were talking about ideas for films, and one of the ideas was the Death Comes to Town, which uh, these three, I believe, took and started working on, and it ex expanded in their minds to a miniseries. In uh, our minds, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> in our minds. <laughs> hey, there, there are parts of this, I, I watched the first two episodes, and there are parts where I thought, I wonder if they were stoned when they wrote that scene. Mm -hmm. just, Actually, just sadly, me. no. Sadly, no. <laughs> just I get up at stoned early in the morning. We're stoned now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, two of us loved the drugs in the old days. Oh, uh -huh. Dave, please, Dave. And some of us liked their liquor. Yeah. <laughs> some of us liked to mix. <laughs> they wouldn't have a picture of my liver. There's no way they could get that. <laughs> That is an X-ray. But where did this idea come from? Because the idea of a, of a, a murder in a small town um, and, and all the characters that play a role, and that's a classic story. It's an Agatha Christie, but it's done yeah. this way. How did you get to the story? It's from an old Stephen Leacock story. <laughs> I think. Called Death Comes to Town, and it was an eight-part miniseries on the CBC in the early 40s, uh -huh. uh, starring Tommy Hunter. <laughs> no, no um, it was actually an image I had, which was Death gets off a Greyhound bus mm -hmm. in a small, weird town. And what happens? And, you know, as, as a writing engine, that seemed really interesting to us. Why was death there? Uh, who is going to die? What happens while he's in town? And, you know, it sort of, it didn't write itself. And but why it, didn't he fly in? Right. Yeah. I did, yeah. Maybe he's death. He can afford to fly, right? Sure. Or he could just sure. appear, sure. which is yeah. another thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the. Um, a lot of air miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does care. What happened to your voice? What, what, what happened to his voice? Oh, can I explain? Yeah. Oh. Kevin, it, uh, Scott is preparing for uh, his one man show, Be Arthur, The Final Days. <laughs> He insists on staying in character. Uh, <laughs> Eddie White and I, the other night, we were on a all light, chatting, chatting, go, chatting. Go, go, go. I lost my voice. Okay. All right. That's a, I'll accept that story. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't believe it, I'll accept it. Um, the other thing about this is that since Kids in Hall, the TV show, uh, the original one, uh, has been off the air, you guys have all had gone to do other things in television, and you picked up different experiences, and you've worked on different projects. When you bring them back into the room, you're not the same guys that wrote on Kids in the Hall. You have all these TV experiences. What was that like? Because you've written television shows, you guys have written television shows and been on them. What was that like trying to get this show to work with this dynamic? 
Yeah. Well, the dynamics kind of the same. I mean, it's it's still in a way like we're still kind of twenty, and the arguments are there. It's just like that old comics joke, you know. Instead of having the full argument, we just say number seventeen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know which fight to have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fourteen. Yeah. Well, twelve. Oh my God! Not Two 12. times twelve. <laughs> twelve in your ass. <laughs> um. Now you really were asking for that. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I fourteen. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I twelve. Um, Really? No, uh, you know, we all uh, we all had sort of different kinds of experiences. Uh, the fun thing was just coming back with like you know uh, uh, better muscles, but it was really the same dynamic. And by that he means comedy muscles. Yeah. Comedy muscles. Like, clearly, like no. no. <laughs> no. Kegel muscles. Yeah, no, the physical no. muscles. Yeah. We don't take steroids, George. We work out. We for don't that. take yeah. steroids. <laughs> Yeah. And that's the only comic body we can show. Yeah. The, the others will actually frighten the children. You, well, your, your character had to wear a fat suit in, 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 this, uh, in this TV series, a very big one, too. Actually, he's wearing a thin suit now. Yeah. <laughs> it's very tight. <laughs> how much, how much, send it back. How much was scripted? How much was improv? Was any of this improv? In the way Curb Your Enthusiasm is a general idea, and then they go with it? Well, no. I, I think, you know, because it was, because it's a miniseries, it's, uh, you know, and we are no Agatha Christie's, um, you know, but there are integral parts, so you have, you have to get from here to here, so you can't just fly off the handle. Um, it was essentially all scripted, and we always play, and we always rewrite on the yeah. set, um, and we always beat the material up in rehearsal, or when someone uh, like myself brings it in, and then Mark doesn't like it, or just whatever. I mean, that was just a name that came off the <laughs> yeah. top of my head. Um, <laughs> Mark doesn't like anything. <laughs> um, but no, it wasn't like we were out there improvising, right. essentially. But yeah. we keep it alive. Uh, yeah, and we hate improv. I mean, <laughs> no, not all of us hate it. Numbers three. Wrong. Wrong. Number three. Wrong. 42A, Come buddy. On, yeah. yeah, 42A. <laughs> the, the, the other thing I wondered from your perspective was on the eve of the release, in that, especially in the last decade, doing the Kids in the Hall stuff and going on the road, and I've, I've been lucky enough to see you guys perform live and the ovation you get. People know they're... They know what they're going to get from you. They don't know all the jokes, but they know the, f the format. Um, when you're releasing something that's a TV series, that's a scripted TV series, what's the anxiety level like individually or in the group? Because it is a different offering to the audience. I think we aren't smart enough to have thought about that yet. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm very scared. Now that you say it, it's kind of crippling. I was, really, I was kind of excited about tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> It is scary. <laughs> it's it's a kind of gamble though because we've we've you know done and been a troop for so long. It's just kind of like well, okay, we're going to take a shot at it, and it, it has its inherent risk. But we're not like 20 years old, and our careers aren't riding on this one. Right. The end of our careers might be, but <laughs> our careers aren't. So uh, <laughs> so it was it was just kind of fun, and it was fun to beat out a long form story and uh, and play characters that had through lines and stuff like that. This was not an easy TV series for you to shoot. No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> this is truly nothing to do with cancer. That's no. big C. Nothing no. to do with the big C. But you had cancer. I had cancer, yeah. yeah. And it was something, I mean, a remarkable job keeping it quiet. Like, very few people knew about this, but you were sure. Oh, I told everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no Nobody cares. cares in Canada. <laughs> we just can't get any people press. really yeah. told everybody. Yeah. yeah. No, he, he, had one day. Day. he had one day where he was going to, like, actually keep it low, and I can't tell anyone. And then the next day, it's like, tell Mike Myers that he can send me flowers. <laughs> get Lauren Michaels on the phone. I think he needs to know. <laughs> I'm curious how you told these guys. Um, Mark told me. I told and it was Kevin and, and Bruce. I yes. told first because we were the ones beating out the story in Los it, it Angeles. It actually came in the beginning of, of the writing process where we were breaking the story, and Scott had been getting a bit sick and a bit um, weirder than normal, and <laughs> so he started first to get. So cancer. we knew that there was some health issue going on, and then yeah, it came later that it was that. And so um, yeah, I told them. You called me yeah, the phone, and tears. I was feeding the cats, and after a while I realized I better stop feeding the cats and pay respect to what you were saying. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was... Uh, Kevin came back to the phone and said, so, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was, uh, it was um, right after the first process when we were beating the story up, and then I got sick in March, mm -hmm. and then I had to kind of be thrown overboard for a while while um, we continued working. And uh, my, my only, you know, it was definitely difficult, but the thing about the series was that the whole time I was going through chemotherapy, all I was looking forward to was being with these 
jack offs. Praise <laughs> God. Well, and also, I think it was doubly hard for Scott in a sense because it was death comes to town. Yes. And every, you know. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, Absolutely, right? <laughs> a little difficult, Bruce. Yeah. And then there were times when I blamed uh, Bruce for that. For the cancer? You know, why the hell did you have to make it about death, McCullough? Oh, and, oh, and all of Scott's characters die. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, spoiler alert! <laughs> no, at one at one point they did. We changed that because Scott wanted some modification to the script. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I said yeah. they can't all die, and I, they don't all die. No, but, I mean, um, but after not. 25 years of arriving on set without his lines memorized, he finally had a good excuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and ironically, he's never been better. He's never been a stronger performer than he is in this show. Yeah. yeah. You'll see. Scott <laughs> So I guess they're saying all the kids out there who want a career in comedy, cancer. <laughs> Don't wait around for it. Yeah. It's not about the internet. Get yeah. cancer. Yeah. Oh, man. But um, it was for me. That's not dark. <laughs> no, no. In some ways, it was the most difficult, but it was also, in some ways, easy because all I had to do was be funny. Right. So oh, that's all I did, and that's all I concentrated on. That's the only energy I had was to be but funny. You, you went camera. to work when you were going through the treatment. What, what was the process like? What, what, what was, did things change a little bit on the set? Well, the, I was going through chemotherapy during the writing process in the summer, and that changed things a lot because I was writing a lot from a, a mattress on the floor. Yeah, I heard there was a mattress in there where if you were too <laughs> yeah. tired, you'd go lay down. And I mean, I really wasn't writing. I'd occasionally yell out and go, I don't like that idea. I need more medical marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody else came into the writing session, say a little hungover and wanted to sleep on the mattress, somebody got all pissy. Yeah. <laughs> so, cancer doesn't cure selfishness. You know? <laughs> and, but, you know, so for me, it was like the light that I kept in my head was, you know, got to get through the chemo, then I'll have seven weeks, eight weeks of light, mm -hmm. and then I'm back into the darkness with the radiation, and then that'll end, and then I'm back here, and then I'm going, George, I'm going to be on the hour, got to get ready for the hour. <laughs> and uh, so in some ways... Oh, don't, uh, he's bullshitting, all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you're well now? You're all right? Very well. Right? Except for the throat. Except for the throat. Yeah. Cancer-free. I've, I've lost my voice because I had a nightmare about being strangled. There you go. The, uh, the series is called Death Comes to Town. I've seen the first two episodes. If yes. it's any indication, they're great. I mean, they're really interesting. Yes. And you know what? The, uh, what I like about it is that you went all the way. Like, there's a, in Canadian television, the knock has always been that it only goes to a certain place. But you guys go all the way. You, um... You played death, and you are wearing the most awesome <laughs> slash disgusting outfit. It is, it is the bravest, it is the bravest body. performance of your career. Uh, this con piece. It's amazing. It, it, but the vest. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> but the vest. I mean, this vest. Where did you get the that? The vest. The vest was this fantastic find. Uh, 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 I think Wendy, our, our old kids in the wardrobe, they fished it out of, um, um, uh, out of wardrobe. It actually belonged to the friendly giant. Yeah. It's the friendly giant's vest. So you're wearing the front oh man. <laughs> and the yeah. cod piece belonged to Wendy Mesley. Yeah. <laughs> actually, oh. actually. <laughs> that joke bombed more than his get cancer joke. <laughs> I thought that was an excellent joke. Yeah, that was an excellent joke. You gotta check it out. It's tomorrow night. You can catch it at nine o'clock right here on CBC television. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Thanks for coming Thank in. You. Thank you.